Religious people uh, reduce everything to a moral or spiritual issue. So when things go wrong, you get a list or you get a lecture. Well, if you just do this, do that, clean up your act, fix this, fix that, you'll be fine. Non-religious people reduce everything to a physical or psychological issue. So when things go wrong, you get a pill. The problem is God never reduces things like that. He never, he never reduces things like that. He's not, he's not simplistic that way because we are spiritual and physical, moral and psychological. Life is complex. Problems are complex. Pat answers are insensitive. Pat answers are inaccurate. So in chapter four of Job, chapter four, verse eight, his friend Eliaphaz summarizes the posture of all the three friends when he says, as I have seen those who plow iniquity and sow trouble reap the same. What's he saying there? He's saying, from my vantage point, in the experience that I've had, the things that I've seen, what I've, what I've seen is that good people get good stuff and bad people get bad stuff. That's that's his simplistic view of the way life works. That's his simplistic view of the way God works. I mean, what's interesting about that is he starts off by saying, as I have seen, as if that gives him some authority. I mean, that's like, you know, saying, I, from what I can see, this is the way life is. Well, there's a whole lot you can't see. So maybe your conclusions are wrong. Maybe it's not as simple as that. Maybe it's a lot more complex than that. You see, I, I think, as I was thinking about this yesterday, that we're a, we're a lot more like, like Job's friends than we want to admit. Uh, the counsel of Job's friends sounds a lot like stuff people inside the church tend to say, believe it or not. It's amazing to me that when things are tough, there is never a shortage of opinions from others trying to explain the pain they are not suffering. Um, you see, unlike Job's friends, good counseling involves a healthy mixture of tenderness and tears, listening and learning. There's just there's so much that we don't see, so much we can never understand. Eliaphaz says, from what I see, yeah, but that's so limited. Your view is only one person. C.S. Lewis said that understanding the way God operates is kind of like walking down the beach and looking at the ocean. You can see water as far as the eye can see, but what you're seeing is a fraction of what's actually there. Well, that's kind of what is happening here. Eliaphaz says, from what I can see, and at, that should actually disqualify him from sharing his opinion. Because, well, from what you can see, but there is so much more that you can't see. There's so much more going on. So most of the time, instead of trying to explain why someone is suffering, just shut up and weep with those who weep. His friends were great counselors until they opened their mouth. We know that Job isn't suffering because he was a, a bad guy. So why do so many Christians believe that God doles out misery in proportion to our sin? Why? Why, why do so many Christians believe that pain is God's payback for bad behavior? I mean, I have conversations with people like this all the time. I'll tell you why. Because we don't truly believe that God is a God of grace. We just don't. Um, he's a God of fairness. He's a God of justice. He's a God who rights wrongs. And that's it. We don't see him primarily and fundamentally as a, as a God of grace. The, the one and only unlosable lover to repeat offenders like you and me. We don't see him that way. Now, let me say this. Um, I've, I've made this connection before. Um, that uh, the fact that there is no vertical condemnation 
does not mean that there are no horizontal consequences, okay? And the presence of horizontal consequences does not imply vertical condemnation. That's the mistake we make. We experience the horizontal consequences of foolish decisions, sinful decisions, bad decisions, whatever, and we automatically conclude that this is, this is, this is God's way of punishing us, condemning us, whatever the case may be. It, I think it's important to, to understand that no vertical condemnation does not mean no horizontal consequences, and the presence of horizontal consequences does not imply vertical condemnation. It's very important to keep those two planes um, you keep those two planes clear. You see, the funny thing is, the sins that you think God is still punishing you for, he doesn't even remember. <laughs> He's not even thinking about it. You're thinking about it way more than he is. That's what Hebrews 8.12 says, for I will forgive their wickedness and remember their sins no more. No more. Because of Jesus, your sin is cast into the sea of God's forgotten memory. See, Christians believe that the link between suffering and deserving was suffered once and for all at the cross. Once and for all. It's a done deal. The ledgers were put away and all accounts were settled. God is not making us pay him back for our sin. When we sin, God is not making us come good on our debt. When we suffer, we think, okay, God, God is beating me up now because I have sinned, and that's okay, because if God beats me up enough, maybe he will then love me. I've talked to people who say these very things. It burdens me, it grieves me. I think, I think to myself, who taught you this? I want to go find that person. No. Jesus died for your sin. He's been punished in your place. All of the punishment that is deserved has already been taken. God is not making you pay him back. We don't believe in karma. We don't believe in penance. We believe in Jesus. We believe in grace. Grace. 